Welcome to the Lean Blog Podcast. Visit our website at www.leanblog.org. Now, here's your host, Mark Graben. Well, our guest today for the Lean Blog Video Podcast is our good friend Norman Bodak, a noted author and speaker and a consultant on Lean, Kaizen, and the Toyota Production System. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you, Mark. It's always my pleasure. So I wanted to let you have a chance to introduce yourself to listeners or viewers who aren't familiar about your uh, your background and your, your past. Oh, thank you. Just want to tell all the viewers about the miracle. The miracle is my life. When I think in retrospect, I like to joke when I keynote conferences about my past and refer to never getting an A in the first nine years, that means from grade one through grade nine, never gotten one outstanding grade, only read three books before I graduated high school, and then the miracle started to take place. And I ended up publishing maybe close to 400 books when I owned Productivity Press, Productivity Inc. And more recently, I wrote four books. And that's a real miracle because even though I was a publisher, I was convinced that I couldn't write. I'll give you a little history. It goes back to about 1979, and um, I uh, picked up the New York Times. It was the day after my birthday, July 13th, and I was looking for something to do because I wasn't working at the time. I was president of a a data processing company, but I left them about a month earlier, and I didn't know what to do. I read the New York Times and it said productivity declined for the first time in 33 quarters. Now, I was real curious because I had no idea what productivity meant. But for some reason, I wanted to find out. And Mark, I went to the library. And that's very unusual for me because I don't go to libraries. If you could look behind me, you'll see maybe, I don't know, 500, 1,000 books because I love books. Not that I read them all, but I love books. <laughs> And um, I love to own books. I love to read books. But I don't like to go to libraries for some reason. But I went that day to the Greenwich, Connecticut Library to find out what productivity meant. And as I studied, at first I found out very little. But I did find out that Japan was the productivity growth leader in the world. While we were negative at that moment, Japan was, I don't know, roughly 5% or 9% productivity growth, somewhere about what China is doing. I became very curious and started to, to review on a regular basis. I would go back to the library to try to discover what's happening. First of all, I found out that productivity is a wonderful word, a really wonderful word, because productivity means that a group of people, a society, a company is growing and they're producing more goods and services for other people to share. So productivity is really a wonderful word to try to see how we can produce more for all of us to live better lives. As I studied, I decided I'm going to start a newsletter. Now, I wasn't even a writer, but somehow I'm going to start a newsletter. And while I was researching in the library, the librarian who became very fascinated with my research and helping me, he wanted to become my writer. In fact, he left the library to write my first newsletters for me. When we were studying, the first thing that we found significantly about Japan was their quality circle movement. And I thought that this is the heart of it. They opened the potential of every single worker. They have every worker involved in these very small groups, maybe five to seven people in a group. They're, they're, They're teams with their fellow workers. And they're encouraged to solve problems in the workplace. I like the idea. Couldn't find anybody in America that was doing it, except, this is part of my miracle, I found Wayne Riker. Wayne Riker was an independent consultant teaching quality circles. He was living in California. Prior to that, I think it was Northrop. He was a manager and doing a project for the U.S. Navy discovered that the Japanese were producing, this is about 1971, the Japanese were producing some superior products that they were buying for the Navy. And so Wayne and Don Dewar, another person 
uh, Don I'm very close with today. Don owns Quality Digest magazine and a wonderful site called All You Gotta Do Is Ask, which I write for every month now. In fact, for the past five years, I've written for him. And they went to Japan on a study mission to find out what the Japanese were doing to produce such fine quality. They went to JUICE, J-U-S-E, which is the Japanese Union of Science and Engineers. And there they were taught about quality circles. And Wayne and Don were smart enough to ask JUICE, can we get the rights to that material? And they said yes. And the Navy paid for it. They brought it back and they started the first what we might call self-directed work teams today, or quality circles. And they were very successful with it. And then Wayne and Don left with the permission of Northrop to teach it. They paid some, some fee or something for it. And I was very fortunate to first meet uh, Wayne back in 1980, actually. And he was very gracious, and he gave me all his training material. And I interviewed him, and I started to write about quality circles. Also about that time, um, somebody that I knew said, look, Norman, you're going to write about Japanese management. You better go firsthand to see what it's all about. And I didn't know how. I mean, how in the world was I going to go to Japan to find out what the Japanese were doing when the American government, who was spending $100 million a year, by the way, translating things from Japan, but didn't find any of this, which we call lean or the total production system. But how am I going to find it? I don't know. I don't know how to speak Japanese. I don't know any Japanese at the time. But this uh, friend of mine said, don't worry about it, Norman. You'll figure it out. It's wonderful when somebody does that to you. That means they challenge you and they don't tell you what to do, but they encourage you and say, look, if you apply yourself, you'll find out. And that's true. Well, about a couple of weeks later, the Industry Week ran a, um, a workshop in New York City, and about 100 people attended. During the workshop, Joe Giorai was the general manager of the Japan Productivity Center in Washington, and he was in New York to speak at this conference, or this workshop, small conference. And he was telling us about Japan. And he, was, he said his main job is to bring Japanese from Japan to study American management. And they sent over tens and tens of thousands of Japanese. They made enormous investments to bring people over here to study us so that they could go back to be more productive. And we send a handful to Japan. I said to the, at the end of his talk, I said, Joji, would you put together a study mission in reverse? Would you take Americans and open up some plants for me? And he said, yes. And at that time, I had a newsletter. I had about 4,000 subscribers. It took off immediately, the newsletter. My timing was perfect. And I asked my subscribers to come with me, and 19 signed up, 19 top executives. I remember Pearl Sherl, Paul Sherl was the CEO of Fort Howard Paper, one of the biggest paper companies in America. And the vice president of Motorola came, and, oh, lots of top people came with me to Japan to study. And we went on that trip. It was February uh, 2, let's see, um, 1981. Thanks for listening. This has been the Lean Blog Podcast. For lean news and commentary updated daily, visit www.leanblog.org. If you have any questions or comments about this podcast, email mark at leanpodcast at gmail.com.